Hello, welcome to Exchange Student in Fiberland. My name is Mary Gale and I will be your host. This is the podcast about um, my adventures in fiber, mostly knitting, but I do a little bit of sewing and crocheting and spinning. Um, I want to jump right in with lessons I'm learning. Those are the um, my works in progress. The first one I want to talk about is called Tina's Skirt. And it, I don't know who it's by. This isn't it. Here we go. Sorry. The, um, <laughs> in my notes I have by and then a blank because I forgot to look it up. But I am doing this with Plymouth Yarn, Bunny, Baby Bunny. Um, I had the, I tried really hard to be organized for you. This is the third spot. Um, it's, I can't be in the spot where I normally am because it's kind of overcast and it was making weird shadows. So then I tried another spot and that didn't work. And now I'm in my third spot and I didn't bring the, um, ball band. So, well maybe it's on this. It's not. Anyway, sorry. Back to the show. <laughs> this is Tina's skirt and it's made out of Plymouth Yarn Baby Bunny color 204. It's kind of a light blue. And um, it's from the bottom up. You'll see there's lots of drop stitches down here to make the lace. And then this is that beautiful flutter by pattern. It's super easy. Excuse me. The um, yarn is cotton and um, angora and something else. So it's really, really soft. Um, there's going to be a little bit of a halo that's coming out. It's really pretty. This is size 7, 4.5 millimeter needles. Um, we are doing a skirt knit along, or you could do a crochet along if you want. Um, we're kind of slow starting, so if you haven't joined yet and you want to, you're not too far behind. Um, life is starting to get in, in a lot of our ways, but um, we're slowly but surely working on our skirts. and. Um, Come to the Ravelry group and get started on a knit along if you want to. There's a couple of um, skirts, this one and the Chelsea skirt that I have recommended, but if there's a different skirt you want to do, uh, not very many people knit skirts, so if you want some um, somebody's opinion or just someone to come along with you, then come join our cow and we'll do it together. So that's the first thing. Excuse me. The next one I want to talk about is the Irish. Iris Mystery Shawl by Natasha Vogel. Um, I'm doing this with Nashua Hand Knits Best Foot Forward in the Fruit Salad colorway. This is size 6, 4.4 or 4.0 millimeter, 4 millimeter. I am on the last clue. I would say spoiler, but I doubt anybody is, everybody's seen this probably because I'm pretty far behind. But, um, I'm on the fourth clue. I'm going to just finish this row of the drop stitches. I'm right in the middle of it. And um, then I haven't decided which, which ending I want to do. I'm kind of excited about doing the beads, but I don't think I have a crochet hook that uh, is small enough. Um, and the only beading I've ever done is at the beginning, like you put them all at the beginning, and I haven't even looked at this, so maybe that's how you do it. I don't know. <sighs> all that to say is, I don't know which kind of ending I'm gonna or bind off I'm gonna do or edging, but I am gonna have three rows of the crossover drop stitch. It's really pretty. I can't wait to see what it looks like blocked. Hopefully, I'll have that done this week. I don't know. I got a lot going on, so that's number two. And then, of course, I've got some socks on the needles. Let's see where... Oh, right here in front of me. Um, I'm doing the Rhombus Sock by Cookie A. I went to the library... Actually, it's in our library alone. Nashville didn't even have the book, the Knit Sock Love. So I had to get it... Um, borrow it from another library. I don't even know another state somewhere. But I got um, a little nervous because Sock Sniper starts September 1st and I figured there would probably be 
some top down socks and I just have only, I've only done one pair before and so I was nervous that I wouldn't do very well so I needed to start practicing top down and who better to practice with than Cookie A. Um, these are the rhombus socks and I am doing them with Knit Pick Stroll in the butternut colorway because it reminds me of fall which I hope comes soon because it's it's not too hot today but it's been so hot but here's my um, start you can see I've got one little set of rhombuses um, I am glad that I practiced because I was having problems with my ladders and I still have a little tiny bit of a problem but I know everyone says tighten up the second and third stitch after you start on your magic loop and I still was having problems and it was really irritating me uh, but it turns out the real reason I was having those problems was because the first couple stitches are pearl and pearl stitches just seem to ladder a little bit more um, but I found an excellent tutorial on YouTube, which I'm going to link to for you. It's by Wendy of the Knitter's Brewing Company, and she shows you a simple way to um, get rid of those ladders, or at least um, minimize the ladders. Um, something else about these socks, which I thought was really cool, I always want to hold them this way because I'm used to them going the other way, but this right here is amazing you do um, you have to use two cable needles or in my case I use um, DPNs but you are knitting along and then you slip two I don't know if it's to the front or the back but you slip two to the front and then you slip two to the back and then you knit two off the left needle and then you purl two off the back needle and then you knit two off the front needle all at once and it was amazing and I felt very accomplished afterwards so you should try these socks because they're um, I mean they're kind of difficult um, but not so difficult that I've given up so there we go oh, there we go and then um, the other thing that I'm mainly working on because you know I have about 500 works in progress but the other one that I'm mainly working on is um, the August Mystery Sock Knit Along by Knitting Like Crazy. Is I don't have I'm not very far on it, um, but it's kind of funny because I um, was watching Knitterbugs and Dust Bunnies her podcast, and she was talking about her uh, mystery sock knit along that she's doing, and I was like, oh, that sounds like fun. I'll go look at that. And I got to the forum and I'd already signed up for it. This is two weeks into it and I'd completely forgotten about it. So I have some catching up to do. I'm doing this with Classic Elite Yarns Summer Socks. Uh, I don't think that there is a colorway. Color 5571. It's 40% cotton, 40% superwash merino, and 20% nylon. So they're nice and stretchy. Um... I didn't pay very close attention to the um, pattern, so my first round is off, which I think just makes it look a little ruffly. And then I started with the second round doing it according to pattern. I was just doing um, a 3 by one rib, and that's not what the pattern says. So, no big deal. Um... Okay, let's move on to final exam, and of course I have some socks to show you. The first one is number five out of my um, 52 pair plunge, and I've finished my Yarnissima Blue Gush socks. I'm going to put them on my hand rather than on the sock blockers, because I think it shows off the pattern a lot better when it's fuller. But these are made out of Sandy's Palette. They're on size 3, 3.25 millimeters needles. Um, there you go. The pattern, if you'll remember last week I said that the pattern went down underneath the foot and it made me a little nervous. I don't know if you can see it. 
but I've worn them a couple times and I really can't feel the pattern when I'm walking so if you were holding off making them to see if the uh, pattern was the problem don't hold off anymore go and knit these up they're very nice um, I do not like the yarn um, I feel bad saying that because it's an independent um, person that I bought them from but the yarn is just not very nice to knit with it's kind of it's not stretchy it doesn't say on the ball band what kind it is I'm assuming it's a hundred percent wool because they're kind of scratchy um, I just think it would and they're not stretchy as far as um, the yarn itself the pattern has got a lot of stretch in it um, but I just found myself really ready to finish the socks and it, I don't think it was the pattern I think it was totally the yarn but there they go and number two or number six of 52 are socks for my husband these are made out of patent stretch they're also size three they um, 3.25 millimeter it's just a plain vanilla sock made with patent stretch toe up two at a time but I did the um, Cat Boardy Super or Sweet Tomato Heel and um, I had so much problem so many problems I had a hard time such a bad time these socks were hard for me and I'm not sure why like first of all I knit them together twice which wasn't a huge deal but kind of annoying and then um, when I went to do the heel, I'm not going to pull my feet up this time, but, um, you know, like if this is your foot, I went to right here and started the heel, which is where I would start the heel for the flegal um, heel. And um, it was too short. So I had to rip it back, which um, when I tried them on, Josh, that's where it was. But when I tried it on me, it went up just a little bit higher. And the the socks fit me fine. Like the heel turn and everything fit me fine. So when I went to do it again, I just um, knitted until it was just a little bit higher. Like up on the front of the ankle before turning the heel. And it worked just fine. Um, but then... So I've already ripped them out a couple times. Then when I was doing the short, short rows, I had put it down and picked it up and went the wrong direction. <laughs> so then I had to rip it out again. Not the fault of it, the pattern at all, just my fault. Um, but then I finally got it finished and I like the look of the heel. It's nice and cupped, soft, cushy heel. There are, are quite a few holes though. I don't know how well you can see it because of the variegation of the pattern. And I don't know, I can't decide if it's my fault because I kept ripping it out. If it's my fault because I did something wrong or if it's the pattern or if it's the socks, the yarn. Um, so I'm going to do again. I'm going to cast on another pair of toe up vanilla socks and I'm gonna do the same heel and I'll let you know was it me or was it the yarn or was it the pattern we'll find out and dun, 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 number seven where is it on my notes gotta flip my notes number seven of 52 my row row socks are done I love them, love them, love them. They are so long and big that I cannot fit them all in the camera. Let me put it on my arm to show you how beautiful it is. Make the full length gloves. Here's the front. And here's the back. And I love them. These were done, this is Row Row Socks by Rachel Mararo on size 1, 2.25 millimeters. Um, I got the sock yarn is 
from Hobby Lobby. I can't remember. It's like footsie is the colorway. Excuse me. Um, I can't remember what it's called, and I didn't write it down. Uh, but I have plenty left over because I had two skeins, but the skeins are really big. So I might make some more socks. I don't know. I'll have to weigh them and see if I have enough. But um, I loved the pattern. I loved making the socks. I'm kind of sad that they're finished, but I'm very happy that they're finished. Um, I think when I knit the pattern next time, I'm going to try to use a bigger needle. Sorry, Scully's licking herself. It's driving me crazy. Scully! Um, I'm going to try to do it in a bigger needle size because making the high socks on size 1 can with that cable pattern just took a lot longer than I wanted it to. But again, I had fun in the process, so I don't know. I don't know. I'll try it with another needle and um, bigger needles and let you know what I think. So, um... Also, my Lexington Waves necklaces. I These are by Amy Flower. I made them with leftover sock yarn. Um, one of them is on size 6 needle, and the other two are on size 4, I think. Um, I was watching This Knits in the Bag with Aubrey, and she was wearing one of these necklaces, and um, I couldn't help it. I had to make one. I didn't even have any beads, so I ran to, um, I got some beads from Hobby Lobby and from Michaels, and, um, I really like them. The pattern is super easy to memorize, um, and it's super quick. Like, if you want to do a, a gift, uh, this only took me like an hour and a half, well, longer on this one because Kira helped me with the beads so that took forever but it's just leftover sock yarn and beads different kinds of beads Here's, this is the second one I did and I kinda changed it up a little bit um, as far as the other ones are all garter but this one has a little bit of stockinette in it with colored beads this Reminds me of when I did those monkey cozy, coffee cozy things, and I just couldn't stop making them because I loved them and they were so fast, and I thought they'd make good gifts. I think that's how these are. I'm gonna, I, I'll probably make some out of all of my lo leftover sock yarn. Um, so, yeah, very pretty. And then, on to other um, finished objects. I've got this bag that I made nice and big. It was supposed to be a project bag, but now I've decided it's my purse because I've got everything in it. It doesn't have any pockets or anything, which I would do next time, but it is lined. It's just over the shoulder. There's no closings or anything. And I really like it. I'm going to make some more of those. And then, um, <laughs> I'm very new to knitting. You'll remember that I got a new sewing, or I gifted a sewing machine. Um, I ended up having to take that in and then it was going to cost almost as much for a new one to get it fixed. So I bought a new one. It's a Singer Curvy. It was only 200 bucks. It's um, nice basic. I really like it. So I'm playing around with sewing and <laughs> this is my second bag. Well, it's actually the third bag I've made and um, it's not really that good. So. Let me show you. I did put pockets. It's supposed to be a messenger bag. So, it's like a little mini messenger bag, which that part looks good. I put a bag or a pocket on each side, which it's not a very deep pocket, but that part's okay. That's where the okay ends. <laughs> I tried to put a zipper in. I just need more practice. It's not lined because the pattern wasn't lined and I didn't know how to do it. So that's a problem. And then the big one, <laughs> I sewed a pin in. It's in there tight. I'm not getting it out. 
<laughs> I mean, it's not poking anything because it goes into the um, pocket. But this bag is just kind of a fail. Kira might use it. She might not even use it because it's, I don't know. I like the material. So that's still a work in progress. I mean, this one's not, but making bags is still a work in progress. I've decided I really like the lined bags better than the unlined bags. And I've been looking at... This is a mess. I've been using... So what bags? Most of them aren't lined. Um, this is from the library. And I haven't gone through and read it. I just looked at a pattern and followed it. Um... So it might show you how to line a bag, but I don't, I don't know. I'm still working on those. Like I said, we'll figure it out. So that concludes my final exam. Let's go on to journal entries. The first thing I want to talk about is Sock Sniper. And as I said when I was talking about the Cookie A pattern, the reason that I was interested in doing the cookie A patterns because it was top down and I'm getting worried that the sock sniper is going to be top down and I'm not as fast at top down. And it's probably just in my head so I've got two top downs in my on, in the works right now so that's going to hopefully put me over the edge. But that starts September 1st. You still have time to sign up for it. It is $7.50 if you do it by itself, or it's $10 if you do it with its sister um, contest, or I don't know what it's called, but sister competition, the Tour de Sac, which starts October 1st. Um, all of the proceeds go to Doctors Without Borders. It's a really good cause, and you get the pattern, I don't know... I think there's four, maybe six patterns you get with the Tour de Sac. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about with the Tour de Sac, I'm not going over very many of the details, I just want you to go read it yourself on the Ravelry page, which I will link in my show notes, which can be found at exchange student in uh, fiberland.blogspot.com. Uh, but I want to see if anybody out there wants to start up a team. Because with the Tour de Sac, you can um, go as an individual, which you would do. And then you can also um, get on a team, and at the end, all of the team points add up. So I thought it would be fun. You can have up to five members on a team. So I'm going to start a Ravelry thread in my group, Exchange Student in Fiberland. And... Um, if you want to be on a team, just sign up there, and then I'll get us signed up on the Tour de Sac uh, page. If there's more than five of y'all, we can either break into two teams, or um, we can kind of a lot other people together. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out, but if there's five people on a team, so um, let me know what you think. And then uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was the podcasters challenge. I'm getting very excited. We get our pattern next Monday. Um, that the knitting for that doesn't start until September second, um, but we get our pattern next Monday and we get to figure out what um, kind of yarn we're gonna do. And then I can share can share the pattern, but I can um, share some yarn ideas so that you can get ready too for that knit along. But then. Something even more exciting for me right now. Ooh, I didn't like that. Sorry. <laughs> um, the Mother Bear Project, which um, is a project to knit or crochet bears to give to children um, who might not have toys like that or little stuffies that they would like to play with. Um, Lois has created a new challenge, and there were 10 of us that are doing the podcaster's challenge that are also doing the Mother Bear project, and the goal is to knit as many bears, or, or crochet as many bears as possible, and whoever, whichever podcaster has the most bears 
wins a pair of signature needles. Now, here's the thing. I love all of my viewers very much. I don't want you to think that I'm um, discrediting you, but there's just not as many of you as other podcasters have. So, what I've done is I've gotten a hold of some other podcasters who are not doing the Mother Bear Challenge, and uh, we're going to team up together and build a little army so that we can take down other podcasters who seem to think that they deserve to win everything, Mommy and Katie. You don't. Just because you have more people watching doesn't mean that you're tougher and doesn't mean that you deserve those needles any more than anybody else. And so we're all going to gang up and um, form one kind of team. And some other podcasters are kind of sponsoring um, their knitting for me and they're going to hopefully have their viewers knit for me as well. And um, I don't want the needles. I just want to prove that... Um, that we can hold our own. <laughs> so, I mean, don't get me wrong, I want the needles, but that's not the point. The point is um, to get as many bears made as possible and to have a little fun um, winning. <laughs> so, here's the deal. First of all, I want to be the podcaster that wins the needles, and I need in order to do that, I need to have the most bears made. And then once we win that, I'm going to donate my needles to one of the people who have knit bears for me. So, um, if you knit for me, you might get the needles. But only if, um, like I can't win unless there's lots of y'all or lots of bears. So, help me out with that. And, um... Here's a little bit more incentive, way more incentive than the needles, I'm sure. The first person who goes to my Ravelry page, there's a or my Ravelry group, there's going to be a thread about the Mother Bear Project. The very first person who signs up and um, commits to making a bear for my group is going to win. Dun, 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 dun. A project bag made by me. <laughs> maybe it'll have a needle in it, maybe it won't, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see, I haven't made it yet. Um, but that's that's what I have to offer. And then um, anyone who enters after that will also be putting in, put in a drawing. I wasn't one of the podcasters that won a free copy of the pattern to give out, but um, Shelby of Miss I can't say her name. I'm so sorry. I practiced before I started. Miss Shalek, Miss Michalek, Miss Shalek podcast, <laughs> Shelby. <laughs> she has offered to purchase two extra patterns. So one to give away in my Ravelry group and one to give away in her Ravelry group. You can't win two patterns, but you do have two chances to win. So go to my Ravelry page and sign up underneath the Mother Bear um, contest saying that you're going to make a bear. And if you're the first person, you definitely get a project bag. If you are the first person or anybody after that, um, you have until Tuesday, August 23rd at noon Central Time to sign up and then you'll get your name put in a drawing for a free mother bear pattern. And maybe I'll give away another bag. Depends on how well I can make them. So that's the deal. Let's um, work together, show some um, minion power. We're not the we're not the big guns, but we, we can still work together and we can still win. So um take that mommy. Okay, that's all. That's all I've got. Thank you so much for watching and um, I hope you have a great week. Uh, keep knitting socks and get ready to make some bears. Okay.